many remember the old game Pitfall by Activision. Pitfall Harry had to run through many obstacles by himself with a timeline to find the gold and win the game. So often we get bogged down with all that is going on in our world of work and life that we think we have to do it all, like Harry, by ourselves without any support. We at Arkansas Transition Services are here to help provide support with the transition portion of monitoring so you don't feel alone. Let's run through some of the pitfalls to avoid with transition and monitoring so you can make it to the end and win the game. Pitfall number 10, not getting in contact with your transition consultant. We can help you in many ways. You can request training and transition for your staff. You can request a transition plan review before monitoring to get feedback on your plans and how to make them compliant. You can ask questions on anything related to secondary transition by phone or email. We can come to departmental meetings. We can come for consultation on a specific part of transition or even come to special events like transition fairs or parent nights. Plus, we have special events throughout the year that your staff or students can attend. All you have to do is ask. Pitfall number nine, not reviewing transition assessment results and plans with students to ensure they are on track for the year. This helps to make sure you have the most up-to-date information. If you need assessments, please visit our website at www.arkansastransition.com where we have a whole area dedicated to transition assessing, including a graphic organizer to help gather all the information together. Pitfall number eight, not using the indicator checklist to make sure all components of indicator 13 are in place. There are eight questions associated with indicator 13 and all must be answered yes for your plan to be compliant. There is one exception regarding inviting agencies to the IEP team meeting. It might be answered with an NA if it is not appropriate to invite an agency to that meeting. This is a great tool to use and it is available on our website. If you are not sure about any of this, contact your consultant. Pitfall number seven, just not completing the transition plan. If you leave out post-secondary goals and activities, or any single required part, that puts the whole plan in non-compliance. It is all or none. Pitfall number six, not establishing a timeline to complete all the assessments throughout the year and then not documenting them on the transition plan. Since we earlier showed you our assessment page, there is really no excuse not to have good assessments given. We have assessment timeline tools under their own menu bar on our website. With that timeline tool are some samples to help your team develop an assessment plan, which will promote effective transition planning for your students. Pitfall number five, not making sure goals are post-secondary and appropriate as based on transition assessments. Here is a sample assessment on the slide. Remember, we are not just assessing careers. We also need to assess for education and training and independent living. And we all know that independent living covers many different areas, so we should see a variety of assessments on your transition plans. Pitfall number four, not establishing appropriate activities for the year being planned for and activities that promote movement toward the correlating post-secondary goal. On our website, we have a great mapping tool that lists examples of different activities in all three domains that you might want to put in place for your students. The mapping tool allows you to pass it around to different teachers so you would have a master list of who might be a responsible party for an activity within your students' transition plans. Are you still with us? We are getting close to the end. Pitfall number three not indicating a responsible party and semester and year for each activity. You have to have those two things in place as well as the activity. And remember, these activities are for this IEP year. Don't project years ahead. Pitfall number two, not including a complete course of study. 
you must show all courses, including what electives the student may take, from the year you are planning for through the student's exit year. You must have the course names for the core, required courses, and electives, especially those electives that are related to post-secondary goals. And finally, pitfall number one, not including agency linkages within the student's transition plan. This can be done in different ways. Invite agencies to speak to your class. Have a transition fair or arrange a field trip for a visit. Just make sure you document it in the IEP. You can also invite agencies to an IEP meeting as long as you have consent. Remember to have the permission for consent to invite agencies form signed by the parent or student if they are 18. You can avoid a lot of pitfalls by keeping in communication with your ATS consultant. Think about doing things like working with your colleagues as a team, or giving assessments, or doing transition activities in your classroom, or attending ATS events to keep from that pitfall. To avoid all these pitfalls and more, contact your Arkansas Transition Services consultant who will be happy to help you. All the consultant's contact information is accessible on the website with all sorts of other information related to transition. We hope we can help you have a successful monitoring. And be sure to like and follow Arkansas Transition Services on Facebook. <music>